Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. Hi, I'm Jessica Faust. We are literary agents at Bookends who have taken our popular blog to YouTube to discuss all things publishing. Um, we have a fun one today that we've been we've been excited about. Um, we got a viewer question about um, what mentorship looks like at Bookends. Why is it essential for literary agents? And perhaps most importantly, because you're all authors coming to our channel, how does good mentorship for an agent impact the author agent relationship? Can I um, give a shout out? to Kelly Garrett, who sent this question in something like two years ago, and we are finally doing it in honor of the release of her new Like book. a sister, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I we should say really quickly, we get a lot of, of questions and suggestions for videos. So um, two years feels about right. <laughs> well, you know, yes. And it sometimes takes us a while, but sometimes we have to be in just the right spot. And today is the right spot. Yeah, for sure. So um, I guess the first thing that we should we should state is that there are no like broader training requirements for an agent, right? Like right. you don't need a certain amount of schooling or a certain type of schooling or to take classes or any sort of training course on how to become an agent. Um, a lot of agents come to agenting through all different ways, right? Like just when you talk about our schooling, English majors, and you are a journalism major, we have people who went to law school at bookends. So we have people who have MFAs. We have right. people who have no college. college. Yeah. Yeah. We're all over the place. And um, that's sort of actually one of my favorite things about this career is I strongly believe you, you know, you don't need a super intense formal education to yeah. succeed. For sure. And I think the flip side of that coin, right, is that if not everyone is approaching the job with the same amount of experience and, and understanding of the industry, not everyone is also going to have the same level of mentorship. Um, if there's nothing regulated, then nothing's regulated. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's, you know, call spade a spade. But <laughs> I, think, I think that is probably an author's concern. So when an author is looking for, um, for an, an agent to represent them, a lot of times one of the things that they're told to consider is whether the agent is receiving good mentorship, if they are on the younger side, or if they have a great team of support behind them, if they're a, a more established agent. Yeah, especially for newer agents, you know, do you, what kind of support does that agent have as they are presumably still learning so many different aspects of the job? And, and hey, let's face it, I feel that at bookends, in many ways, we're all still learning. You know, we're all still learning from each other because the market shifts, things change, and um, some people come up with new and terrific ideas to do things that we all latch on to. But also there's always something new happening, right? Like some new way an offer is made or a negotiation strategy goes down. So I think having that sort of pool of colleagues that can discuss everything with you is always yeah. really beneficial. Um, but we wanted to talk a little bit about what we feel is good mentorship, which is the mentorship at Bookends and what it looks like on both sides, because mm -hmm. we have both sides of the desk here. Um, and then how that might benefit you as a creator who is hopefully working with us. Yep. Um, do you want to start? No. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then I guess well, I'll start. I can start. I can start because I can start with a little bit of history and my personal experience. So I strongly believe in mentorship and how important it can be. And I not only mentor the agents at bookends, but have also um, become involved in other programs um, through AALA and other organizations where I have mentored agents who work at other agencies. Um, I think when I started bookends, um, I didn't have mentorship. I had guidance and, and mentors when I worked um, at Berkeley Publishing, but when I left to be an agent, I, I found it very difficult to find a support group like I had hoped I'd be able to find. And I found bits and pieces here and there and, and agents who were willing to, agents less than five, who are willing to get on the phone call or go out for lunch and talk to me a little bit about things. But I found more closed doors than I did open ones. I found more agents saw me as a potential threat. They saw competition and they didn't see an opportunity um, that we can all grow together. 
which for the record, I do feel has changed. Drastically. I was going to say, I think that's changed a lot. Um, I think that there are a lot more people. I think that newer agents, more junior agents have support groups among each other. Right. Which is great. Um, and I think that there is a general call in publishing for mentorship and which is why the AALA now has a program and things like that, um, which is so thrilling to see, but that didn't exist 20 years ago. Um, so for me, it's really an opportunity to give back. I think um, mentorship for me is perhaps the most, one of the most important things for anybody working in this industry because of what we mentioned, like there's no standard, right? There's no one roadmap, not even to just your career in publishing, but the way that we do our daily tasks. Everything has eight different options of what we can do. And I think if, I mean, I'm not, but if I were looking for a job at this time, I would not go anywhere that does not have mentorship because mm -hmm. I think that it's good mentorship that can, I mean, you know, everybody has their own characteristics of, we talked about that in a video of what we think every good agent needs, but mentorship is one of the driving factors in every agent's success, I think. And I think that if you don't have those voices behind you of, I did this, you can also do this, or you can try it this way, just empowering you to try new things and to do things in a way that has been proven to be successful. I don't think agenting is going to be an easy, an easy go. Um, I think we need that sort of, you know, like those that did it before us in order to know how it can be done. And the mistakes people have made. Yeah. I mean, I um, <laughs> sometimes embarrassingly will share experience of mine, experiences I have had that are not always my proudest moments. Well, it's funny because that's what we were going to talk about what we think good mentorship was. And that's what I, that's one of my biggest things about why I find your mentorship so great is because it's always honest. Like, it's not just, okay, well, look at all the things that I did that are great and you should try and do that. You never do that. If like, if I mess up, you were like, believe me, I've done that. Or, <laughs> or you know what? Actually, I did this thing, which is 10 times worse than that. It's totally okay. And I think if we don't see, I say it all the time. Like if I don't see a, a more senior agent struggling through something that I'm currently struggling with, it's like, how do they get there? It feels very discouraging. And I think what the mentorship at Bookends has going for it it's super transparent and always very honest, which makes it less like, oh, well, this is my mentor and more like that's like, I don't see you as, I see you as a mentor, but like a colleague, right? Like it's just a conversation. It's not something I'm intimidated to bring up to you. It's never like that feeling of Jessica is perfect and I have to <laughs> have my, my ducks in order before I go to her, which I think changes the relationship a ton. Yeah, and I also try really hard to um, not, tell anybody what to do sometimes that drives me crazy <laughs> you're not the only one who says that but there is there is no in many ways in this business there is no right way or wrong way to do things there are often a lot of gray areas and a lot of different options and I try to lead you and guide you, but also allow you to make your own decisions. Because if I sit here and say, okay, go do this. Okay, ask them for this. Okay, say this. You're never going to get on your feet in a way that allows you to find your own path. And also, you know, the one thing I say often is your own superpowers, you know, th that you can say, wow, I did a really great job in that. Not, I did a great job in that because Jessica told me what to do. Well, the skills in this job are not selling the book, which I think is always really easy to confuse, right? Like we might see an agent sale and be like, oh, they're really skilled at selling YA. But it's it's not that they sold that sale and that's what made them good at their job. It's all of the decision-making processes, the, strat the strategizing, all of the things that we do leading up to that sale and that announcement, that's what makes a good agent. And if yeah. we can't build those naturally without somebody micromanaging or telling us what to do or coaching in that you should do this because it's the right way to do it. Um, we never build those muscles and we can't apply that to every situation. But all of the skills that we have as agents can be applied throughout the entire job and any genre, any age group. Um, so I think it's, it's crucial that we build those as younger agents, junior yeah, agents. Yeah, absolutely. Can we get a little into the specifics of all the like sort of ways that mentorship actually happens here? So the first and foremost is that, um, you know, everybody at Bookends is remote. We've been remote 
since well before 2020. So um, one of the difficult things in a remote office as everybody else has learned since 2020, but we knew what before that was maintaining a strong level of connection. So there are a number of ways we do that, that also um, I think ties into the mentorship, which I also call coaching. Um, I, I call it more coaching because to call myself a mentor feels like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big word. Um, so I have a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with each agent every month. At least. Uh, yes. So there is one pre-scheduled, consistent, we get on the phone for an hour. I have a worksheet that I love when the agents fill out. I think it helps sort of everybody to pull their thoughts together and do an overview. And then we can discuss what's on the worksheet, but we can also discuss anything and everything. And for an hour, each agent has my, each, not just each agent, assistants, everybody has my undivided attention to um, use that time however they want. So it could be discussing a very specific current issue, strategy, um, problem. It, it's celebrating successes. It could be business and it could be personal. It could be whatever is challenging you um, or not, or what you wanna be celebrating. Um, so everybody gets that individual one-on-one -on -one time. And I think my purpose for that is twofold. One is that it's about coaching and mentoring, but two, it's about connection. And what I always say is because one day when the shit hits the fan, because in some way, shape or form, it's life, shit will always hit the fan. Um, we have hopefully built a relationship that you are comfortable coming to me and having those discussions rather the only rather than the only time we talk is when shit is sitting in the fan. Um, so that's the first and probably biggest um, thing we do for mentorship. And the second thing I think that is um, maybe sometimes even more important, do you think, Pub 101? Yeah, and yeah, and I think um, maybe not even Pub 101. Pub 101 is a Slack channel that we have and weekly meetings that we have um, for anybody who really wants to attend to discuss literally anything. We usually have like an umbrella category a week where Jess will do like an explanation or we'll all talk a little bit about our general impressions of a certain subject, but the floor is pretty much open for anybody to bring any topic there. If it's a client issue, a negotiation strategy, we can discuss and even just the vent that we're frustrated with something um, the floor is open, but I think really what that's a part of is just your coaching calls and just on like a daily basis, like you're consistently open. You have an open door policy. Um, it's almost like you have office hours every day where the floor is open to do that. Um, yeah. And I think publishing one one is just one of the avenues um, that you do that. But we have a Slack with, at this point, I don't even know how many channels it is, oh, but gosh. over 20 channels were broken down by any aspect of this job that we can also jump into to do that in. Yeah, Pub 101 is a group made up primarily of me and mostly junior agents and assistants. Um, and so it really is the 101 basics of publishing, but that's not all we discuss. Like you said, it, it is sort of, it, it's almost like um, our individual coaching mentoring calls. It's, it's like group therapy <laughs> instead of individual therapy. Yeah. And, and, but what I like a lot about Pub 101 is that it's not just coming from me. When a question is asked and put into Pub 101, it's a larger group discussion. And I think that, and you can say, confirm or deny this, um, that I think for more junior people, it allows you to sometimes answer the questions and test your knowledge and say, I do know what I'm talking about because yeah. you can help be a part of the mentoring process in some way. Yeah, for sure. And I also think, um, you know, when there's a bigger group and you're posing a question to a bigger group, sometimes it, whether you want to or not, you harbor that shame, like, should I know this, right? And I think with those more breakout and, um, and more focalized groups based on level of experience or subject or whatever, I think it, it 
it helps dissipate that a bit. And like, we can have those conversations more freely and less like, okay, well, all of the senior agents are here and they're gonna think that I should know this. Like you get to get rid of that. Even though everybody has those questions at some point, everybody has that question you feel you should know. Um, there's none of that like, Ugh, should I know this one? Or <laughs> it's just a very free, like, like planet fitness, no judgment zone. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Publishing 101 is the planet fitness of booking. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And then, you know, some of the other channels where I think um, group mentoring happens within where sort of everybody at bookends can step up and does step up. I'm just going to name a couple, but we have um, a negotiating channel where if we're in the middle of a challenging negotiation or even just have a question, sometimes it's a gut check. Sometimes it, we just need to say, I was going to do this. What do people think? And you just need to hear other people say, yes, go for it. That sounds amazing so that you can go in with more confidence. Um, we have a contracts channel where we obviously discuss contract terms, things we're talking to publishers about. Um, I think the pitch channel where we um, share the pitches we're going to make to publishers when we're submitting has been super helpful for all of us and interesting to see everybody's very different style come through. Yeah. Um, but it's also great for feedback because send, putting it in the pitch channel is very much like this is how editors are going to read this. So that's been really great. And, and in all of these channels, everybody in bookends is in the channel and Everybody, um, well, not all the time, but everybody at some point or another, we will give feedback and be a part of the conversation. So the mentoring happens sort of across the board at all levels. Right. I think the third way that mentorship is really prevalent at bookends is through transparency. Um, in addition to those channels that you have, we have a publishers and editors channels, both for adult and kid lit publishers, where we are constantly sharing wish lists and everybody is sort of embracing their contacts, but then passing along to the rest of the team, where if you're at an agency where you don't have that, um, a, approaching a submission can be incredibly difficult because you don't have this backlog of information. Um, or if you do have a backlog of information, that's consistently revolving information. Um, so it's hard to keep up with that if you're just one person, keeping up with all of the genres right. and editors. Um, we have the same thing for art and illustration. We also have news and, and um, you know, deals that may have happened that were really worth noteworthy, um, which again, if you're one person, it's hard to keep up with the news. Anybody knows that now, right? Like it's hard to keep up with all of the things that could be happening. So when you have 10, 15 people come together and share that, um, it just makes for a very enlightened area <laughs> for everyone. Um, and then things like uh, we share the deals that we close, right? So we know how much X publisher is paying for X deal. We share the clients that we're signing. We share our book covers. So we all have a very um, broad knowledge of the types of deals that are being made currently. Um, so I think that transparency, that level of transparency, even if we don't use it as soon as it comes through, it's this searchable catalog of you know, bookends history, which is always incredibly helpful. Yeah, and there'll be a lot of conversations like, um, has anybody negotiated with this publisher? Did you ask for this? How did they respond? Doesn't mean that we won't ask for it again, but right. it does mean that we go in a little bit more armed and ready. Yeah, or how many times we get an offer from a publisher and someone's like, I just closed a deal. You should know this, right? Yes. Um, which yeah. again, if you're working in a sort of a echo chamber, you don't get that. And you might go in and not realize that you could get something that's fairly standard that maybe wasn't in an offer because believe it or not, offers are not standard. Um, so I think all of that information, just information is, you know, is power. And I think that yeah. because we all share it, it makes it easier. But that's sort of like a, like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a secondhand mentorship yeah. because it's something that we're doing but a lot of people don't realize how meaningful it is for junior agents. Yeah, and I don't think we necessarily think of those things. Or I never did thought of those things as mentorship, but they are because they it's are. really just sharing knowledge. We also have our weekly meeting. That's the entire team, which is also not necessarily something I always think of mentorship, but again, is, is opening up for connection. So, um, and, you know, we discuss current events. We have a discussion almost every week about something. Um, 
and, and we do sort of the gratitude and things like that, that allows us to just get to know each other a little better, I think, so that um, it does open the door for more conversations among everybody else. Um, and then you mentioned the open door policy, which I would say at least every day, I'm having multiple conversations that are sort of, can we talk through this? Can we go through this? Can we have a conversation about that? But I think that a great, a lot of that happens the way I've tried to establish relationships so that people can say, can I get in and talk to you today? I wanna to go over this or that or discuss this, or I have some concerns about this or whatever it is. Or sometimes I just get DMs that are like, oh my God, look at this, great news. But again, I think so much of every bookends agent's success is owed to that because it's like, a, even if it's not just like coming to you with something, it's the, we've built the habit to stop and think and talk something through, which a lot of agents might not do, right? We might just yeah. feel like, oh, I know what to do here and I'm gonna do it. But I think we've all really have developed that voice in our head that's like, is that the best way to do it? Can I talk it through a second time with anyone, not just with you? Because I do it with, we all do it, you know, in our DMs, but we have built that instinct to interrogate whether our gut decision is the best decision for everything, really. Yeah, so. it's the what's the rush theory. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, I rush through stuff. Yeah, so it's that the 24 hour rule or the take it slow or don't right. rush through something. Let's, think yeah. it, let's talk it through. And But the other thing I, I wanna say is that mentorship, I think sometimes sounds one-sided and for me, it's truly not. Every question, every challenge, every conversation I have, I learn something from, whether it's to do better at what I'm doing as a mentor or even in, as an agent or whatever it is, to me, it's not about I'm telling people what to do or I am teaching. To me, it's about we're all learning this together. And so often in these conversations, um, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or group, I am being challenged to think about things differently and maybe we should do it that way and that's a good point and I hadn't thought about it that way or whatever it is. So to me, it is, an equal exchange. And I think that's really important because I think a lot of, um, I think there are a lot of people who when they think of mentorship, think of what they are giving to the mentees. And I think that um, there's a lot more to get from the mentees than um, a lot of people realize. Yeah, for anyway. sure. Well, if you made it this far in the video, um, <laughs> I think we should we should also talk about what that means for an author agent relationship, too, yeah. because I think, you know, every time we get on an offer call as a bookends agent, we are always referencing this. Right. Because it's it's less we less reference it less as mentorship, more as community. Mm -hmm. And I think I, what, something I always like to say is tell every client I would be your point of contact. I am your agent but it's almost like you have a team of 15 behind your back, right? Because if I ever get stuck on something, whether it's creative with the manuscript you sent me and I'm just like, how do we get this to the next level? Or who do I send this to? Like all of those things you'll never know are happening behind the scenes. Yeah. So you're always getting this full on community of agents and that transparency, that information, that support um, with every you know bookends agent that you would, you would query or sign with. Um, and I think, it's not, it's hard for an author to know when they're getting that. And I don't think there, there always is a way to know that you're getting that without asking directly. Yeah, I think when the author offer of representation call, especially if it's a younger agent who may not have um, as many sales or is sort of that publisher's marketplace, oh, I see who their connections are, to ask about mentorship and how the agency works and um the transparency i mean do you work together when yeah setting your submission list or when doing edits or what does that look like i think that's a really important question to ask yeah i, I think it it really can make your confidence in who you're signing on with just skyrocket um so we hope this was helpful. I feel like we covered it. This was probably a long one. I'm looking at the time, but, but we I, had fun doing it. We did. And I think it was a really important conversation because, you know, the word mentorship is thrown around for, for authors all the time, but I don't think there was ever really a clear understanding of what it can look like and what 
you can look for in an agent. So we hope and maybe what some agencies can be doing that are right. Yeah. So we hope this was helpful. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have a question, put it in the comments. In two years, we might be we'll get to it. <laughs> we might be able to do it. Um, but thank you for watching, and we'll see you back here next time. Bye.